Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's great to see so many people here. This is, this is a wonderful turnout. Uh, and uh, might be might be more to do with the good weather and the excellent cakes than the people who are up here speaking. But uh, we'll take some of the credit anyway. My name's Pete Bell. Uh, or if you know me from my uh, online existence, Peter A. Bell, uh, which uh, may sound a bit pretentious, uh, but it's actually only to differentiate me from uh, a surprising number of other uh, Peter Bells who are out there. Uh, I spend the biggest part of my time uh, campaigning online for a yes vote. Uh, I have a sadly, sadly neglected blog uh, but mostly I write below the line comments uh, on uh, newspaper websites and uh, other blogs uh, as well as doing a bit of stuff on uh, social media uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest and the like. It's mostly about uh, rebutting the distortions and downright lies uh, of uh, Better Get Together and the friends in the media. Uh, I've been a, a supporter uh, of independence uh, all my life, uh, literally all of my life, uh, or as I prefer to put it, uh, an advocate of restoring Scotland's rightful constitutional status. Uh, I put it that way because uh, uh, for me this is first, last and always a constitutional issue. I accept the inevitability uh, of all the talk about uh, uh, economics and currency and all the rest of it, uh, and I understand the necessity for it, uh, but still, to me, uh, these are peripheral issues. Uh, the referendum is not really about uh, what currency we use. Uh, or whether we'll be a few pounds richer or a few pounds poorer, uh, or you know, how much clout we have in the world, any of that nonsense. Uh, it's about uh, how we think of ourselves, uh, our communities and our nation. It's about whether we it's about whether we see ourselves as a nation or whether we see ourselves as merely a region within the British state. Uh, I, I take no particular pride in being Scottish. Uh, pride is for personal achievements. Uh, all I had to do was uh, be born uh, in Fife to a mother who actually happened to be born in uh, this very city and a father uh, who, uh, somewhat inconveniently for my ar argument, uh, contrived to get himself born in Australia. But you take my point, I'm Scottish by birth. Uh, there was no effort or per personal sacrifice involved. The so-called New Scots, the uh, Asians, East Europeans and all the rest, uh, to my mind they have more right uh, to uh, express pride in being Scottish uh, than I do because uh, they have made a, a conscious decision to be Scottish. An important point here, being Scottish is not about a common inheritance, it's about a shared commitment. So when I talk about the nation of Scotland, I'm talking about the people of Scotland. I'm going to talk about the people of Scotland, I mean those who have made a commitment to the nation and its people, and if that sounds like some kind of circular argument, uh, I make uh, no particular ap apology for that, because uh, I see no reason why uh, a nation need be defined uh, by reference to anything out with itself. Uh, we are a nation not because others say we are, we don't need anybody's permission to be a nation, we are a nation because we say we are. But what kind of nation are we? Uh, obviously, that depends on what kind of people we are. The anti-independence campaign likes to pretend that nationalists like myself, and uh, I, I don't have no problem at all, Pauline, in using the word nationalist. I'm quite happy to be a nationalist, and I will speak to you later about that word. <laughs> uh, the anti-independence campaign likes to pretend that nationalists like myself uh, uh, are claiming some sort of uh, Scottish superiority 
Uh, they obviously haven't met some of my friends. Yeah. Uh, they, li they, they like to put about the, uh, the notion uh, that we are saying that people in Scotland have different and somehow better values, uh, attitudes, uh, than people in the rest of the UK. It's all lies, of course. Uh, all we claim is that there is a distinctive political culture in Scotland. Not unique, not even necessarily better, but different from the rest of the UK. And that shouldn't be a controversial claim. Uh, voting patterns in Scotland alone uh, should make it evident that Scotland uh, has a distinctive political culture, uh, even if it wasn't already glaringly obvious from the fact that we're having this bloody referendum. <laughs> uh, we need independence so that the policies which affect our lives can be informed by our own political culture and not the political culture of the British state. Is that too much to ask? That was a question. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> I'm not used to saying no. <laughs> nice to get a bit of audience feedback. What makes Scotland's political culture different? Ultimately, it must be the people, uh, because it's people who, over time, uh, shape the political culture. But that doesn't mean, uh, that it doesn't imply that individuals in, in Dundee or Dunfermline have attitudes that are markedly different uh, from those of individuals in Doncaster or Durham. We can all be offended by the injustice of the bedroom tax and the obscenity that is trident. It merely means that those attitudes uh, are expressed differently through the local institutions and processes of, of democracy so as to produce this distinctive political culture. People are pretty much the same uh, the world over. Uh, I, I usually at this bit I go into uh, this long thing about uh, a certain Professor Brown's Human Universals. I'll spare you that. Because you're nice. Uh, but people have pretty much the same all over the world. Uh, political cultures uh, vary tremendously. Why should it be such a dreadful thing for Scotland to have its own political culture? That was another question. Why should it be such a dreadful thing for Scotland to have its own political culture? I don't see the sense in that. We want independence not because we regard ourselves as superior, but because we refuse to accept that we are inferior. We, ref <laughs> we refuse to accept that we are less than the people of other nations <clears throat> who take their independence for granted. <sighs> Get a wee bit of emotion in the voice there. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So, if the kind of nation we are depends on the, the kind of people we are, what kind of people are we? Uh, it, in a very real sense, that is what will be determined uh, by the referendum and the campaign leading up to the vote. Uh, how that campaign is conducted will say a lot about who we are, which is why I so deeply present the way that the British parties in Scotland are behaving, but that is another topic. Let's consider instead uh, what this vote says about us. Think about the question we're being asked. Should Scotland be an independent country? Can you imagine that question being asked in any other country? Can you conceive of the people of any other nation even considering the possibility of answering no to that question? <laughs> the fact that we are asking this question of ourselves tells us what kind of people we are, or kind of people we have been. 
people who have for uh, too long been meekly content to accept uh, subordinate status within a union that was contrived in a different age for purposes that were never relevant to us. A union that we, the people, had no part in creating or sanctioning. An anachronistic, dysfunctional, corrupt union which serves none of the people of these islands well. A union which was always intended to serve the purposes of the ruling elites. A union which, in that regard, if no other, has not changed one iota in the last three centuries. A union that imposes policies which are anathema to our people, policies which have been rejected by our democratically elected representatives. A union which, were we being given that option today, not one of us in here would vote to join. Not one of us would vote to join that union. And yet, we are being asked to stay in it. All of this is, and uh, more, uh, is what we've accepted in the past. And our acceptance of all this has defined us in the eyes of our neighbours and the world and I, I, ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, I put it to you that the fact that we are asking ourselves this question says nothing very flattering about who we have been in the past. The way in which we answer the question, question can change all that. It can change the way we see ourselves in the future. It can change the way others perceive us. It can change who we are. And by changing the kind of people we are and how we think of ourselves, it can release the forces which will change the nation. Or it can do the other thing. We can vote no and confirm that we are to be no more than that which we have been, that we will not be what we aspire to be, that we choose not to be all that we might be. I ask you again, ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine the people of any other nation making such a demeaning choice? No! no. If we vote no, will we ever be able to look each other in the eyes again? I really worry about that, how it will affect us if we vote no. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I said earlier that uh, I wasn't particularly proud of being Scottish. I explained that this was uh, uh, because there was no, uh, no personal achievement involved, uh, no effort. I didn't have to do anything in order to become Scottish, so uh, I see no, no cause for pride. But I do take pride in my country. I am proud of Scotland. Not a vaunting, strutting, flag-waving, belligerent, my country right or wrong kind of pride. No, no. A, a, a quiet, cautious, conditional, pragmatic kind of pride. I want to be proud of my country. I want Scotland to be a country I can be truly proud of. I see no possibility of Scotland being that country while it remains part of the British state. We are told that uh, with a bit of constitutional tinkering here and there, Scotland can be as good as independent. That is a fallacy. The only ones who have the legitimate authority to decide what powers the Scottish Parliament has are the people of Scotland themselves. So long as that power remains in the jealous grasp of the British state, Scotland will be less than a nation and its people will be diminished accordingly. The more so if they actually consent to this condition. Excuse me. The referendum. <coughs> The referendum is not about money, uh, or money, uh, or oil, 
or monarchy. Uh, and it certainly isn't about Alex Salmond. It's about you. Uh, it's about us. Uh, it's about the people of Scotland and what kind of people we are. This referendum uh, is about the most fundamental cost constitutional issue of all. Sovereignty. The sovereignty that rightfully rests with the people of any nation. This referendum is about whether we are the kind of people who will carelessly allow that sovereignty to be usurped by the ruling elites of the British state or whether we are the kind of people who will seize to ourselves the power to shape our nation and our destiny. I'll vote yes, not because I'm inspired by a great past, but because I aspire to a better future. I'll vote yes, not because I'm resentful about what has been done, but because I'm hopeful about what can be done. I'll vote yes, not for anything that is promised, but for everything that is possible. I'll vote yes, ladies and gentlemen, and for the sake of Scotland, for the sake of Scotland's people, for the sake of Scotland's future, and for the sake of your own modest pride, I urge you to do likewise. Vote yes.